Hello and welcome back to a new Bieber Hunter Scale Models Pentatank video. This time it's all about pin washes, rust effects using oil paints and enamels and rust effects and did I mention rust effects? I hope you enjoy this video and will have some fun. So let's get started and please enjoy the new intro. I hope that wasn't too dramatic and I would love to know what you think about it. But back to work now. This is the point where we left after the last video where I painted the camouflage and base painted the bare metal parts. These are the oil paints I want to use for pin wash and some rust effects. Raw and burnt umber, a lighter and darker brown and burnt sienna which is very good for light rust effects. And after I dried the paints out on a piece of cardboard to get rid of the linseed oil, I used some odorless thinner for diluting the paints. As I'm not doing this every week, I started on the running wheels because they are the perfect training ground because there will be mud and earth later. And of course, as long as the paint hasn't dried out, it's easy to remove it with thinner. And as you can see, I'm struggling a bit at first to find a good consistency of uh, paint and thinner ratio, so it flows around details nice and uh, it was a bit of trial and error at the beginning. I used the lighter raw umber on the running wheels because I didn't want the pin wash to be so dominant. And on the pure yellow areas this was a good match for me. When I pin washed a few parts I let them sit and dry out for a few minutes until the paint is dry to the touch. And then I grabbed me a soft with thinner moistened brush and blended the pin wash and removed excess paint. As blending and removing takes some more time than pin washing it's a good idea to not pin wash the whole model in one session so you don't run out of time and the paint dries when you're at the last part. And I use brushes in different sizes to get into the small places uh, around the screws and bolts and I don't remove everything with a bigger brush. And I made sure I didn't forget to wipe off the brush on a piece of napkin from time to time so I don't get the brush overloaded with paint and push it around instead of removing it. On the engine deck I used the darker burnt umber oil paint to make the pin wash because the raw umber was slightly too light for this dark camouflage pattern. With the upcoming weathering, dusting, earth and mud effects this pin wash will be toned down a bit anyway and because uh, he is less yellow and more green and brown I thought it would be a good idea to make it slightly stronger than on the running wheels. The process was the same as everywhere. Apply the pin wash, let it dry a few minutes until it's dry to the touch and then remove excess and blend it into the surface with the soft moistened brush. And the upper hull is a perfect place to see how important a pin wash is and how it made details stand out and get highlighted. You might remember from the building video that I reworked and rebuilt the weld beads from Green Stuff Putty and to highlight them a bit and make them a bit worn out I used metallic paint because weld beads don't rust, they maybe get polished because of wear and tear and I tried to replicate this by slightly dry brushing the weld beads with the uh, AK natural steel paint. And of course I had to be very careful here because it's very difficult to remove metallic paints because of all the shiny pigments. Because the metallic paint covered the pin wash in some places I repeated the pin wash on the weld beads with very diluted raw umber and worked out the C shape of the weld beads again. And I think it came out nice and added a few more details to the model. 
because my custom made Zimmerit got a bit toned down by all the camouflage paint, I made a very strong diluted pin wash on the Zimmerit surfaces with a light raw umber. This pin wash was very strong diluted because I didn't want the Zimmerit surface to get too dark. When the oil paints dry, they always dry out lighter as they look when they are wet. But I wanted to avoid to darken the Zimmerit surface too much and just slightly highlight the Zimmerit pattern. And then it was finally time for some of my favorite techniques adding rust effects. I started with the dark rust effects, put them into my palette and added a drop of thinner. And with a long and pointy brush, which is very precise and can hold a lot of paint, I applied a dot of rust effects on every metal chip I made in the last video. And then again, after the paint had time to get right to the touch, I started to blend in the paint into the chips with a soft moistened brush. The goal here is to make the thick brown dots a bit more translucent and basically make a dark brown filter over the metal chips and give them a rusty look. And because this is looking so good and this technique is so much fun, I always have to control myself to not overdo it and make it look like an abandoned vehicle. As this effect is stronger on the yellow surfaces than on the camouflaged ones, it's a good idea to make more blending passes so the rust effects are not too dominant. And I also use the dark rust streaks to imply some fake shadows on the fan grills. Which were also blended with a small amount of thinner. Because the dark brown rust streaks weren't very well visible on the oxide primer areas, I reworked them with the light rust washes. It's not like that these light rust tones stand out very much on the surface, but they help to bring a bit more interest into the surface and make them stand out more from the acrylic chipping. And again, they work perfectly on bright yellow surfaces. I then could finally take care of the bare metal parts and I started with applying a thin layer of the dark rust streaks. As you can see, the paint is strongly diluted and I applied it wash-like over the whole surface of the bare metal parts, like these spare tracks here. The spare tracks were a bit more work because I had to make sure I hit every angle so if you look at the model from different directions there's not too much pure grey to be seen. And as additional details I wanted to rust the open hatches because these are high traffic areas. And for more details, the side skirt holders were rusted too. I then used burnt sienna oil paint to apply the first light rust tones, and these were applied in the still not completely dry dark rust tones. On horizontal parts like the spare tracks, I tried to break the surface by applying the lighter tones on the upper area and make the, dark, the lower area more dark. 
If you like what you see and maybe became curious how I got to this point, I can recommend check out the first two videos about the building and painting the camouflage. After the lighter paint had a few minutes to dry, I grabbed me a soft brush, slightly moistened with thinner and tried to blend the edges into each other. It's not always uh, very easy to hit the right spot between too dry or too wet for the blending brush. And so it can happen that uh, I remove too much paint while blending them into each other. But that is not really a problem because I'm not done yet with applying the beautiful rust effects. Like I said, I wasn't really happy with the coverage of the paint on the grey base paint, so I again grabbed me the dark rust streaks, diluted them even more and applied another layer on the lower areas of the spare tracks. And this time, instead of using the burnt sienna oil paint, I used the light rust wash to apply some brighter rust tones on the upper areas of the surfaces to bring in some more variation and make the rust tones pop more. I'm aware that these rust effects are very strong and I maybe hit the point of an abandoned vehicle already here. But I can't help myself but like these rust effects and I prefer the look over the realism here in this case and I think it helps the model to get a bit more of character. And here I'm using the still wet brush with which I applied the light rust effects and blended them into the darker rust streaks which were still not completely dried until this point. The next point on my to-do list was treat these battle damage or shell impacts and get rid of these dark grey spots. I base painted them in the last video with a dark grey as a foundation and now I applied the slightly diluted rust effects, in this case the streaking rust. And while the first layer was still wet, I applied the light rust tones wet and wet into the dark rust. The idea here is to simulate a rusty look of the bare metal which was exposed by a shell impact or other kind of damage. And I finish them off with AK's natural steel by painting the raised edges of the impact holes. I herefor grabbed me my metallic paint brushes and cleaning water and then carefully painted the raised edges of the impact holes and here I am trying to imply the damage which was caused by blown away metal which was flying in all directions. This step brings some more details and variation into the model surface and so to say act as a counterpart to the dark rust tones to create some more contrast with the shiny metal paints. Here you can see how the paint helps the bullet holes to stand out from the rest of the surface and the broken off teeth of the spare tracks get also highlighted this way. And I must say I'm happy with the result and the look. 
Of course not only the model itself but all additional parts like the running wheels were painted in the same way as long as I had the paint in my palette. Because I already felt a bit exhausted I thought it would be a good time to start painting the exhaust. I started with applying a thick glaze consisting of white with a tiny amount of red and heavily diluted with flow improver. So the grey undercoat was still a bit visible. And for a small heated metal effect I used this blue heavily diluted with flow improver again and applied this ultra thin glaze on the lower area of the exhaust. And with the dark rust paint I painted the areas where the paint was chipped off and the exhaust started rusting. On top of that I slapped the rust enamels consisting of the dark brown rust streaks and the light rust tones, but I wasn't really happy with the final result. So I grabbed me my acrylic paints again and added some white chips to lighten up the overall look of the exhaust a bit. Then I used a very dark brown acrylic paint to darken the rusty spots because I thought it uh, was a bit too light and I wanted a darker tone here. And then again on top of these came the enamel products and I here started again with the very strong diluted streaking rust. And while the first layer was still wet I applied the light rust effects wet in wet in, until I was happy with the look of the exhaust. And I think it's looking better now and it was worth to get back in there and try to improve the look. And as a last step for today I used some paints grey oil paint diluted with thinner and painted the rubber parts of the running wheels. This is technically more uh, glaze because the paint is very strong thinned and I wanted to give the rubber parts an additional layer of depth and change the color a bit because they were base painted in the same grey as the bare metal parts. And with that being done, we finally made it for today. Thank you very much for watching my video, I really appreciate it and I hope you had some fun and maybe could even learn something. I would be very happy if you consider supporting me by subscribing and leave me some feedback. Because I would love to know what you think about the progress so far. To me the look of the model improved a lot compared after the last video where I wasn't sure where this model is heading but now with the pin wash and the rust effects the picture is a bit clearer to me and I'm more happy with the look of the model now. So enough for today, thank you again for watching, stay safe and until the next time hopefully.